thanks for inviting me. Um, okay, uh, thanks to the team of the Goethe Institute uh, for helping me get here, inviting me here. Thanks for you for coming here. So, uh, what uh, what do I have to offer? Um, after a whole day of theory and, and philosophy, uh, I'm afraid I can't give you that. Uh, I will give you images, images of uh, video surveillance, and. Uh, be before I do that, they, they, they'll they pop up in a minute. Before I'll do that, uh, a short introduction to, to my background. I mean, uh, Scott has told you about this. Uh, I come from, from media studies, from cultural studies. And in um, 2001, uh, or like years, years ago, summer 2001, uh, I decided um, that uh, video surveillance would be my topic. And uh, the idea was um, that the idea of video surveillance is. Um, a lot of people talk about video surveillance and these people would be criminologists, sociologists, uh, lawyers uh, from a legal perspective and coming, having sort of a aesthetic, artistry, cultural studies background, I said, okay, it's, it's, it's great what these people do, but what they're missing is actually the core element of video surveillance, which is video, I see. Video surveillance, literally translated, is I see surveillance. So surveillance is something to be seen. And the core element of video surveillance is the image. Um, and so I said, why not, sort of with the background and perspective and the sort of sensibility of what I've learned as a, as a guy who does sort of film studies and media studies and literature, uh, comparative literature, um, why not look at video surveillance from this perspective? And um, as you might remember, um, around 2000, uh, there were all these movies coming out, Enemy of the State, Minority Report, Truman Show, uh, A Panic Room by David Fincher. And so uh, this was sort of my starting point to say, okay, how is video surveillance represented in these movies? Um, but when I, um, the, the more research I did on uh, video surveillance and images, uh, the more uh, my, my focus switched from uh, representation of video surveillance in, in images, in popular culture, in movies, for example, to uh, the question, to a completely different question, but it's, it, which still is related to the question of representation, and that is, how do these images of surveillance, uh, how do they operate within the logic of surveillance? How are they sort of part of not only science about, but are the representations of video surveillance, but how do these, what I will call images of surveillance, how, how are they part of the working and functioning of surveillance itself? And um, you know that the, um, and, and when I say video surveillance, I mean, um, open video, video surveillance for crime prevention, video surveillance in public space that is open, that can be seen. I'm not talking about hidden surveillance cameras. I'm not talking about um, um, surveillance for other uh, means. Uh, let's say uh, in, in, in public transport, you need surveillance cameras in order to, to, to make sure that the train is running correctly and so on and so on. I'm talking about um, what was around 2000s the most prominent um, um, thing of, of video surveillance, which is video surveillance by the police for the purpose of crime prevention in public spaces. So this is sort of my, uh, the, the surveillance I'm talking about. So, uh, so what I'm hoping you will learn from in, in the next 20 minutes, and Sarah has promised to stop me because I can talk on for hours and hours about this, is uh, I'd like you to uh, learn something to, to give you a, a new perspective on these images. So the next time you, you see a, a video surveillance camera, you see an image of video surveillance or about video surveillance, you'll hopefully think different about it or have another perspective on this. So, so this is what I'm hoping uh, what, what keep, I can do for you. So let's see. So what is an image of video surveillance? Uh, of course, what, is, what, what do you understand uh, about an image? Of course, with an image I mean what, what, what you all understand by it, posters, pictures, uh, paintings, these sort of representational signs. Um, uh, but I, uh, in, in my book, Bilder der Überwachung, um, I, I, it, it's a, an image is slightly more than that. An image, uh, let's see, um, this is also image of surveillance. The surveillance, the, of course, this is an image, but say, the camera you see in the streets is a sign of itself. It's sort of, it's, um, it's showing itself. Here, look, we, you are being surveyed. And so the camera in the street, I would say, in my definition, is also an image of surveillance because it had a, it had a, cert, it had a certain uh, way uh, of looking. It had a certain design. And uh, look here, uh, that's really one of my favorites. Um, uh, the camera has a certain character. You can uh, look at it as an image and you can um, make differences between these 
pan tilt zoom cameras and the dome cameras, they all have a different uh, gestalt, uh, all different design. And this is also what I understand with images of surveillance. So the surveillance camera in the in a public space, they also represent themselves as surveillance. So, um, yeah, anyway, yeah. So what I mean with, uh, I, I started with representations of surveillance in popular culture and I moved to, and, and it sort of became another question. So the question uh, would be, uh, to, to my surprise, the more I learned about video surveillance as means of cri instrument of crime prevention, uh, the more I understood that it doesn't work. There is, it, it simply doesn't work. Uh, all the promises that have been made about, oh, we're going to put up a lot of surveillance cameras, a lot of CCTV, and crime rates will fall, it doesn't work. There, were, there was an, all evidence was, was, was against this. Um, and we, I'm not talking about Great Britain at the moment, because Great Britain was the, where the most um, uh, research and studies had done, so I relied on these uh, figures and studies from uh, su video surveillance in Great Britain, and they were clearly showing that it didn't work. Even the government had to admit it doesn't work. Um, and still, and so, and so my, my, uh, my question was, why do we still believe in video surveillance? Why does everybody, including those who are against it, including the critics, attribute so much power to it? If, if you look at the numbers, the figures, it's really a weak, a weak instrument. And it, it's not dangerous, it's, it's sort of, it's not compared to data veins. I mean, we, we, I think Armin said, uh, that video surveillance is sort of old school and data veins is the new thing. I agree to that, but still, uh, I, I think that I've learned that video surveillance is not, it, it is dangerous, but it's not as dangerous as people thought. And so I'm, I'm, I was really wondering about why everybody was so obsessed with video surveillance, at least, let's say, in a, between 2000 and 2010. So, so what, what's, what's the power of video surveillance? And so why is it believed to be working? Um, and I think it's simply because uh, it produces images. And what are images? Images are um, not instruments. I mean, video surveillance is technology that it tries to use an image as an instrument, as a tool, as something that you do things with and that is that's rational and that is part of a machine. But an image is not a hammer, an image is not a nail. Humanity, we, the image is so much part of our culture, we, we, we can't be neutral towards an image. An image is always something that affects us. An image is always something uh, that, 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 that reflects our own desires and, and, and feelings. An image is always something that we, we cannot fully control. It's simply not possible to treat an image solely or exclusively as an instrument, as a rational thing. And so my interest is, is in the, to put it very simply, I think that the fact that video surveillance is based on images makes it irrational. I think there's a deeply irrational side to, to video surveillance, and this is what I was uh, looking for. So, what's an image? Um, uh, so, this is, this is sort of my, my uh, this was sort of my, my uh, suspicion that, 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 that because um, images are, uh, can, uh, will never be a neutral instruments, ne never be neutral tools, um, um, the whole technology of video surveillance will never be a, of, of course, not in a legal sense neutral, but it will never be totally rational. It will never be only tech technology. It will always be more. So what's an image? Um, this is a, um, uh, obviously a, a clip from a, um, a German uh, journal for police officers. So uh, where they discuss things, uh, police uh, officers between themselves. And the article is introducing a new technology that is uh, uh, speeding cameras installed in police cars. And they say, oh, it's so great if we have speeding cameras installed in police cars, then we can show uh, uh, the, the guys who are speeding. So this is one person, he was speeding, he was sort of uh, stopped by the police. Uh, then we can show them that they were speeding. We can give them an image of their own wrongdoing, of their own crime. And here, say, here it says, uh, this guy, the Betroffene, he is interested and here he is looking uh, in, the, in the police car, there is a monitor, and, and they show him, they show him his own image. Look, this is what you did, this is your crime. And here it says, oh, the, the, the guy is interested and amazed, oh my God, this is me. But he's not angry. And so the whole point of the article uh, was that, um, look, uh, fellow policemen, when we uh, stop people who are speeding and we give them a number, you were speeding 80 miles, we give them 90 miles, they will deny. Oh no, it wasn't me, your instrument is wrong, uh, it can't be, uh, go to hell, fuck you, and so on and so on. But if you give them an image, they 
will be completely delighted <laughs> because they see themselves and they will be convinced it must be true. Uh, it has to be true. This is evidence. You can't, an image can't lie. And a figure can lie, but an image can't. This is, this is the, the, the argument of the article. Um, and so he's happy. Oh, great. I've seen myself. Yes, I've done wrong. I, I gladly pay. I, I won't be angry. This is what the article says. And at the same time, uh, the, the, the fun thing is that the article itself uses two images to make this argument. And we, as, as readers of the article, still believe, oh, look, he's so not angry. He's so compliant with us. We don't know if that is true. We don't know why this guy is smiling. It's just, the, the, but the image still shows us he's smiling, so we have to believe. So this is, um, uh, there's sort of an image here, and, and, uh, which is convincing him that he's done wrong and it's all okay if, if, you, if you have to pay a fine. And, and these two images, again, to... to um, persuade the readers of this article that this is a great technology. So you have a, do a double layer of images. Uh, so there's a double existence, again, of video surveillance, but what I mean with double existence, so this is an, an artwork you can, oh, I have a laser pointer. Uh, here, there is, that's, that's a painting, and that, that's the real camera, and uh, this was an artwork by Felipe Dulceides in, in, in San Francisco, around 2002, I, I think. Um, and I found it on a weblog, and the guy uh, who, who made this photo, and the guy uh, who made this, the weblog, he commented on this. Uh, firstly, oh, look what I found today in, in this in this corner. A great piece, uh, piece de resistance, uh, subversive art. Uh, someone blew up, uh, uh, no, not blew up, someone painted uh, a blow up of a, of a camera, and uh, to show us everybody that we are under surveillance and this is great uh, critical art in the, in the style of Banksy. And two days later, <laughs> he corrected himself in his blog, oh, I just found out that this is commissioned art. Uh, the guy has been paid uh, by a clear channel, some, some um, uh, cable TV company to do this and this is all within the realm of capitalism and whatnot. Um, and so um, one thing I found out about video surveillance is that you can't be ironic about it. There is, there is, the images don't tell us if, it's, if, if they're serious or not, and I will give you another example in, in, in a few minutes. There's some sort of an um, um, in, indecidability um, if, if, if an image of, of video surveillance, uh, so, so, so this one up here uh, is, is critical or not. Uh, and and um, I can't quite explain why, but it's, it's, this, this, this will lead us. Uh, I'll comment more on this sort of hidden irony, but, but at the moment, uh, let's say, uh, Every video surveillance is, is double existence, which simply means that, that you have a real surveillance, so the real technology, it, it works, it doesn't work, what not, and you have the image, the discourse, the, the belief of systems about video surveillance. So this is just to illustrate. So what, what did it look like? I, um, the first one of the images of surveillance um, I looked at were, of course, CCTV signs. So the, the law decrees uh, that every camera or every system of cameras has to have a sign, that has, to, that has to show that there is a sign. And then I've looked at dozens and dozens, far more than these uh, CCTV signs, and I tried to read them a way sort of a cultural studies guy would read them. And, and I've made most of the, except for, 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 for this and this, 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 I've made these photos myself. And if you look at these, they all have mixed messages. So here, um, there was in Cambridge, thinking of stealing a bike, don't take a bike that's not yours. Who, who's the address of this message? It's of course, people who, t who steal bikes. Sort of, this is a warning. Don't do this. And actually, I've, I've looked everywhere. I didn't find a, t a CCTV camera. <laughs> the only CCTV camera I could find were these on the, on the, on the, on the photo here um, in, in, in Cambridge. Uh, so this is a, a warning. Don't do this or we'll put you in jail. Um, here, this is Bremen. Dieser Platz wird video geschützt. It's literally this place is protected, or this public place is protected by video. It's not you. We protect the place. We're not going to protect humans um, or people. Uh, the, the place is protected by video. That, that's what it literally says. Uh, and we want you, we wollen, dass Sie sicher leben. We want you to live safely, uh, Bremen Police. So this is, um, of course, the, the address here is not the, the thief or the criminal. It's, it's the normal citizen. Um, so we want you to live safely. This is the you. Uh, but still, there's sort of a contradiction be between uh, what's, what's being protected, the place or, or us people. So this, this uh, sign says the place is protected. Here is warning. 
again, uh, so uh, don't, don't do something, but warning not, it doesn't say warning, um, uh, there may be um, thieves around here uh, uh, who, who steal you back, but the, the camera protects you. No, it does not say that it says warning, images may be monitored for the purposes of crime prevention. Um, I don't know, there's some sort of a discrepancy between, I give you a warning and the images may be monitored, why the images are monitored, I mean the place should be monitored or what not, the cameras should be monitored for the purposes of crime prevention. Is this what you want me of? Anyway, and this, I like this very much. This is the Humboldt University of Berlin, these are Bereich, these areas under surveillance and here, this is legalese talk, it simply says uh, everything that has been recorded will be pro processed and handled uh, by uh, the, the instructions of our data protection person, blah, blah, blah. All this is legal. This is basically what it says. So up here we have this area is under surveillance and here it says basically don't be afraid. All this um, will protect you from the images because all of this is done uh, according to data protection principles. Um, so what's dangerous is actually the video surveillance in itself, if you take it literally. What's dangerous is actually the video surveillance itself, uh, but don't be afraid uh, because we have data protection law which will sort of hold the video surveillance um, in, in check, so to speak. And of course this is uh, total irony, smile on CCTV, but it's a, as far as I know it's an official sign. So, so the, the public transport in, in London or Sheffield would put these up, so they're not joking. Uh, and this, um, I photographed this because um, you also have to look at where the sign is placed and very often I find that the signs are not placed on eye level, they are placed right above your head. So you can't actually read this. And so the symbol would be, oh my God, I have to look up um, and, and it looks down on me, sort of, you know, the God's eye view, it's higher than me, I can't reach it, uh, it's more important than I am. So also the, uh, you know, the location of the sign, I think, uh, is a message in itself because it's so 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 high up there, here, and I have some more uh, here. Of course, I'm a film scholar. I like that they have a film camera here, <laughs> not, a, not a video camera, and this sort of ironic villains beware. Sort of they're making an irony out of it, so they're trying to be funny in a way. Um, Anti-robbery device again. This is, but here, and you find that so often that the, the, the symbol of the camera is not a video camera, but some sort of handheld, eight millimeter, sixteen millimeter, or here this actually silent movie camera. Camera. Um, so, th yeah, this is what I, what I like about this one. Um, okay, this this is something completely different. Um, it's also a warning sign, but th th that is a, a star who actually sells images, paintings, and he says. Uh, don't pee on my doorstep. If you pee, uh, don't let your dog pee at my doorstep. If your dog pees, I will record it. It will be on YouTube. You will be shamed. So th that of obviously goes in a different direction, but it's still interesting uh, the way sort of it seems. This is my favorite. Um, I have to show you this image before. This is a, a, a shop in, in, in South Germany where they sell clothes, and this is where you would change your dress. Uh, and and they have a toilet, a fake toilet, obviously there. And this is where the sign is. So you have this sort of toilet situation where you are meant to 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 try on a new clothes dress. And and this is um, of course the, the Incredible Hulk uh, in the background. He's very angry as he always is. And he says, "Video surveillance for your safety." What safety? I'm not safe. The Hulk is going to get me. So th that, that's that's a completely mixed message. Uh, our new visible and invisible cameras uh, will catch every thief and he will be put five years in prisons and uh, those uh, shop lifting um, um, is bad for uh, the honest customer and those who steal, steal their future because they will be caught. So we have all sort of mi mixed messages here in a way, uh, don't steal or the Hulk will get you and, it's, uh, and um, if you steal, um, you won't do yourself any good, and uh, it also says uh, it's for your safety. And I, I can't start to, to, to analyze this because there are so many mixed messages. I'm with 10 minutes. Oh, give me a break. Okay, um, I like this one very much. Um, secure beneath the watchful eyes. This is again uh, the path from of irony. Um, th this is real uh, when. Um, 
so, so, so you have, this is a real campaign that London Transport made to f please feel more secure when we put up cameras. But the, the poster obviously says, that uh, is, is an image that says cameras are um, UFOs in the sky that are threatening you or so. So the, the iconology is, is completely contrary to, to, um, to, to the promise, to safety. And, and uh, when Simon Davies, Simon Davies is head of Privacy International in Great Britain, saw this first, he also put up a blog, he thought, oh, that's great irony. Someone um, actually sort of Banksy style um, put up a false poster, wrong poster here, and then only later he, he found out that the, the, the London Transport is serious about this. So there's, a, again, a sort of a double thing, but um, okay, five minutes, uh, because these, these are, this, this is the very, this is the most important image in the history of video surveillance. If you don't know about it, this is the, this is James Bulger, um, uh, this is uh, culprit A and B, these two guys, teenagers, and they are taking James, uh, the little James, three-year-old um, toddler away um, on this date, uh, on this time, from a shopping mall in Liverpool. And uh, 24 hours later, James Bulger will be found dead, uh, beaten to death. Um, and um, uh, these two guys will be found, but they won't be found because of the images, because as you can see, the image is very, very low definition. Uh, they didn't find these two, the two murderers were teenagers, um, like 12 or 13 years old. They didn't, didn't find him via video surveillance. They found him via normal standard police uh, means. But nevertheless, um, in Great Britain, after this event happened, it was not possible to be against video surveillance. And so many uh, colleagues from Britain told me that it was not possible to be against video surveillance because everyone was saying, we need video surveillance in order to protect our children from being killed, from being abducted, from being murdered. This was, uh, and in, in 93, um, uh, John Major actually said, um, after this event, we need more video surveillance. And um, I have to quote him because this is, um, I have no doubt, this is John Major, I have no doubt that we will hear some protests about the threat to civil liberties. Well, I have no sympathy whatsoever for so-called liberties of that kind. I mean, the, the prime minister, democratically elected, says in front of journalists, liberty, fuck you, I don't need liberties, I have no sympathy for liberty whatsoever, because we need more video surveillance, because it will protect our children. And so uh, after that, the British government in the following next years uh, spent one billion British pounds on video surveillance. This image is why uh, Great Britain today is the most heavily surveyed in terms of video surveillance country in the world. After this image, they, they couldn't be stopped. The irony of is it, video surveillance was in place and it didn't stop the killers. It didn't stop the, the, the two teenagers to, to adopt, the, adopt the little James Bulger and kill him. I mean, this is the proof, if anything, this image proves that video surveillance does not prevent crime. It does not prevent our children from being taken away and being murdered. And, and nobody, this is, is a complete, complete, uh, iron, also complete contradiction. And um, of course, you know him. Um, uh, and you remember her. And these are, uh, if, if you look, if, if you ask for what images are most prominent, what video surveillance images are most prominent in the press, these, these are three images you would find everywhere. Even if you have an article that is not about the Bulger case, James Bulger case, but about surveillance in general. This is, a, this is where, where I left, left it in. This was taken from uh, Der Spiegel, uh, an article on surveillance in general. And this was sort of an illustration for surveillance and video surveillance in general. So these are really icons of video surveillance. And what do we have? Three people, little James Bulger, and he is uh, here. Uh, shortly before leaving uh, the, the, the shopping mall, uh, we have uh, Mohammed Atta at, at the threshold in, in, in Portland, uh, and we have uh, uh, Lady Di, Diana Spencer, um, going through, walking through a door. We have three people on, sort of on a threshold in a situation of leaving one room and entering the next. Um, and we all know they will die. So th these images came up after they were dead, sort of. Uh, th we have images where um, 
And, and these, why have these images been chosen? These are not the last images, at least in the case of James Bulger and Lady Di. These were not the last images that, that had been taken. James Bulger, there were more images uh, of him by video surveillance cameras when he was walking around the city. But these images are so highly symbolic because they give you, they give you I think this is how, how to read it, they give you this promise, this is the moment of decision. This is sort of the, the decisive moment where they are about to leave one space and enter, enter in another space. They're on the threshold, on the verge of something. And this is the moment we could intervene. We should have intervened. This is the moment where we could go and stop Atta. Uh, this is the moment where we could go and stop Diana from uh, entering this Mercedes and then driving herself to death. This is the moment where we could intervene. And this is what the images give us hope. Um, um, uh, I can see it, I can still intervene. The, the moment is frozen in time, she's not yet dead. Sort of, this is the, 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 the moment before she's dead. And I think this is why, why these images are so powerful. Because they give us this hope. We can intervene when you have the images. These people are about to die and we can still stop them. But of course we can't. This is sort of a false promise. So, and, um, yeah, forget this. This is nice, uh, but I study CCTV, CCTV cameras. And uh, someone will report me and then a bomb won't go off. Um, this is what I do, and this is what Niels does, and this is what David Lyon does. We all study CCTV cameras, but anyway, okay, and there's the glamour of being watched. We can talk about this in discussion. Um, and there's Elvis, and there is uh, the Eye of Providence, and yeah, okay. Um, thanks. I, I skip the rest. Thank you so much, Dimar. Can, can folks hear me okay? Great. So I, I think your insights um, about, the, uh, about the, the representations and images of surveillance camera, cameras themselves are really important. And um, the, the, there, is, there is a unique insight there. It's something we can learn about the way that the surveillance regime and the surveillance state is, is operating. Um, but I would like to push back a little bit uh, in terms of your focus and your reliance on the representations of surveillance cameras themselves. I mean, as I think your examples highlight, the representations are in many ways uh, overbroad in what they convey the cameras doing and in other ways over narrow. So in your bike example, um, the, the, the image of the camera, the representation of the camera is that we are only surveying you if you are a bike thief. Uh, that's clearly wrong, right? They're surveying so much more than that. Um, and so in that sense, the, the, the representation is overly narrow. The chilling effect um, is perhaps broader. And then at other times, um, perhaps, uh, you know, the representations are overly broad. We're led to believe that the surveillance is panoptic, um, that there is this big brother, uh, that there is a boogeyman, um, and we create surveillance as a boogeyman underneath our, our bed, and so we chill our own behavior as a result when in fact the surveillance is um, limited, maybe there is no camera yeah. at all. Um, and so I'm wondering uh, what your response is to that and whether or not f focusing on the representations of the cameras in some ways might uh, be a red herring or lead us to further um, misunderstandings about the scope of our survey of surveillance we're under. Yeah, um, thanks. The, um Boogeyman is, 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 a, is a good metaphor. Um, the, the more I found out about video surveillance, and I didn't find this out my, by myself, but I found this out by, by work done by criminologists like Neil Surafsky or Clive Norris in, in Great Britain or Gavin Smith and, and Mike Cahill, guys who really ask the questions, does it prevent crime? And it does not, uh, from, from all we know. Um, I'm... I always find it, how do I talk about it? On the one hand, I'm really inclined to say, come on guys, video surveillance is just a boogeyman, it's, it's a red herring, it's, a, it's, it's, just a, it's just a straw puppet, and it doesn't really, it's, it's really not dangerous in a way. 
because I've given so many talks and presentations on video surveillance and people come to me and, oh my God, uh, is it true that the satellites can see through my roof and I'm, I'm afraid to, to walk the streets and, and I, I hide myself and I say, don't do this. I mean, this is where I would go with David Lyon, be more optimistic about it or uh, don't, don't be, uh, on the one hand, I would, I would say that don't be afraid because video surveillance, it's not working more often than not. It's, it's, these cameras are not on, they're broken, uh, they, they, they don't see anything, they're not being monitored, and so on and so on. So this is what I would say on one hand. On the other hand, I'd say, of course it's dangerous. Of course video surveillance has a great impact on, on our society. And of course it has a great impact uh, on our way um, we, we uh, define ourselves as a society, uh, but not by technology itself, because not because the technology, the, the sheer functioning, would have any relevance. It, it does not reduce crime. Um, but um, because the way we talk about it, because the way it's presented, because the sheer, the sheer existence of it, because the sheer acceptance of its working, this is because the way it's working in our mind, so to speak. I think this is the dangerous part, of, in, in my view at least, that the way it changes our culture, our, um, our, own, uh, acceptance, our own view of, of democracy, uh, of, of what it means to, to be in a public space and so on. So and this is the dangerous part. It's not dangerous because they, oh, they would track you or, so, or so, something uh, like that. Um, not dangerous on this individual level, on personal level. I don't feel... Mm. Uh, threatened by the police or so. But I think this, uh, the danger comes from this sort of cultural um, change, cultural transformation in accepting video surveillance as something that would protect us. Mm -hmm. in accepting video surveillance as something that's part of a public, public space, a public sphere. I, I'll stop here because this is, I would go around and on. Yeah, so no, so and on the so point about whether or not it's dangerous, it's, I mean, I think dangerous. we agree, you know, in terms of its chilling effect, there is, there is a danger. Um, but even in terms of, and I, and I think, you know, the, the three examples you pointed up, I think there was Princess Di and Bolger, um, and, I, I, and I, I, okay. Um, the, you know, I think that those do highlight uh, how surveillance Im images and cameras can be ineffective um, or, uh, in terms of actually fighting crime. Um, but at other, other times, the, the images are used for really horrible crime-fighting effects. And I want to give you an example. It's an American example. It's uh, from a Supreme Court case called Scott v. Harris. And it didn't deal with um, public surveillance camera, but it was a dash cam there was a dash camera uh, on a police vehicle. And the case involved a, a high-speed chase in, in Georgia. And the, the person who was speeding um, was a African, young African-American man. Um, and once the police officer turned on his lights and tried to pull um, him over, a high-speed ch ch chase ensued. Uh, and the um, person who was speeding, the African-American man, w ended up a paraplegic uh, and he sued the police officer, saying that this was an unreasonable use of force. There was no need for a high-speed chase here. There was no need for you to ram me off of the road. The case went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the question came down to, based on the perspective of the police officer from his dash cam, was the use of force reasonable or unreasonable? In an 8-1 decision uh, authored by Justice Scalia, the Supreme Court said, there's only one way to view these facts. Based on the video surveillance from the dash cam, which is taken from the officer's perspective, the use of force was reasonable. And there's only one way to view that. And so the Supreme Court effectively said this police violence, sanctioned this police violence based on the surveillance camera. And so my question is, um, you know, one, are you understating the, understating the degree to which these surveillance cameras are used to um, police behavior and excuse police conduct? And the second question, and maybe a more interesting question, is what is the role of perspective? If the surveillance cameras are always coming if we're always looking at the images from the perspective of the state, from the perspective of the police officer, what effect does that have on the way we view the world, how disputes of fact 
are arbitrated once they're in the court or in the court of public opinion in the media. Oh, okay, it's two, two big questions. I should have taken notes. Um, thanks for them. Um, one thing, images bef bef in, in a court. Um, I, I can't give any explanation about the, 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 the fact that the, the, the trial you've given or the, the, the concrete case. Um, I don't know anything about this. Uh, but it's, what is known is that as soon as images are introduced into, into legal proceedings, into, in, into a court, um, um, first of all, from what I know, but, but I'm sure you know it better as a lawyer, that first there was some sort of resistance uh, of the legal system to introduce images, uh, first of all, to let them so in sort of images instead of... Uh, eyewitness reports. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I've read so many statements of, of police officers um, in, in, in Great Britain that they say, um, okay, I was summoned before court to, to give my eyewitness report, but then um, some guy came up, up with a videotape and all that was said was reduced to nothing because everybody was believing the evidence mm -hmm. of the image, no matter where it came from, sort of the, the mm -hmm. source, police camera, private camera, whatnot, that doesn't matter. So there is a real, um, at least in Britain, uh, we have shown so many statements that, that the police itself, they are really um, uh, worried about um, what's my, um, I'm a police officer, I'm trained, I've done this for 20, 30 years, and my word is worth nothing before court because we have these images. Mm -hmm. and this is, these are real worries by police officers. And uh, we also have evidence uh, of, um, there, there's, a, there's a really studies of uh, how does police react to being surveyed themselves on the street, um, um, they would say, um, oh, we, we, there, there's a fight going on, say a pub fight. And, and then we're summoned there and we have to stop the, the guys fighting. And we are really, really scared that um, what we do in front of camera will be misinterpreted as, mm. force, as, as too much violence. And so we are rather careful. We won't go in uh, if, if uh, anything we do in front of camera can be uh, misconstrued and so on and so on. And we will show our faces and sometimes they would say uh, we'll, um, for example, interesting thing, we'll turn the lights off of the police car because too much light will produce a glare. These cameras are very, very light sensitive. If you put on too much light, they'll see nothing, actually. Uh, and, and we'll turn about this, this and that way uh, so that the camera can always see that what we're doing is legal, what we're doing is right. Um, and so, so I, have no, I have no statistics about how often um, images from a police camera uh, or from, let's, let's say, a publicly owned camera um, are used against policemen or for policemen for forecourt. I don't know how, where this would go. And, and actually, I doubt that in the end it's the image, because images can always be interpreted one way or another. I mean, take the Rodney King video, made by a bystander, a civil person, and it was supposed to be uh, for Rodney King, uh, but uh, the lawyers turn it all the way around mm -hmm. and say, oh, look, he's, he's fighting back. And so uh, I don't think we, that, that the image tells the truth. It's the way the image is framed before court, um, um, the way it is used. And uh, as for, uh, are images good to reveal police violence? Um, we, should have, we should look at the figures. We should, I don't have a study on this. Is, is that a case and answer? <laughs> Did you have a, po a question on that point? Sorry. Um, Thank you. Um, and so you, you're kind of like debating how, how could it be helpful, but then if we think about who produces these images, you know, um, um, you see that in, in the context of the United States, like people have been trying to counter police brutality or mm -hmm. police violence with uh, film the police, you know, and, and many people film the police, you know, uh, beating up black men every day and black women too, of course, and um, what happens is that these images mean nothing, you know, especially for the system, especially for the judiciary, you know, it means nothing, you know, and they, they it, it means nothing because the system didn't make it. And now they're telling us we should have body cameras for policemen as if that will change the reality of it, you know, as if policing the police is, is possible by the state, you know. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, and then the, in the context of Europe, you have all this like hyper. Um, monitoring of Muslims in, in public spaces, you know, after 9-11, uh, 
And as you described the UK after that context of you know policing the society and thinking we can interfere at that moment before death, you know the same thing happened, um, uh, you know after the train bombings that happened in the UK, right? And, yeah. and the UK is much more surveyed now, and that doesn't um, stop terrorism, and that doesn't you know it's it's always you know these images are there for the state to validate. Everything and maybe I don't know about Europe, but in the U.S., like the surveillance industry is so big, you know, and there's always tendency to provide them with more reasons to, you know, produce these technologies and the effect on that, you know, on all um, all the world, you know, we we become the labs uh, for such a policing experiments. So I I just wanted to bring this up because you know um, who produces images is is also a relevant point here. Yeah, um, who produces these images? I don't know if that is a relevant point. I think who 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 takes hold of the images and who who distributes them and who 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 frames them, who frames the meaning. I, I don't think it's so important that who is the person standing behind the camera. Or so I don't I don't think that's the point. But who is distributing and who it is putting in public and who is giving the first interpretation, which is could be the same person, could be a different person. But I think the point is who is. Uh, uh, who has sort of the, the right of discourse to interpret the image? Because as I said, not every or anything can be interpreted in any ways, I don't think so, but uh, the discourse, uh, the comment on an image can change the frame, can change the interpretation a lot. Not, not totally. We, 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 I mean, black person getting beaten up by police guys, you can't interpret this as, oh, this is just a giraffe eating carrots or so. Of, of course, this is so. It's, it's, it's not possible. But um, uh, the interpretation and the framing and uh, who has the media power, so to speak, that, that, I think that, that's important. That is what we should look, look at. And of course, if the police wear body cams, they are the ones who, who have the images. They can hide them and they can, um, or they can put them in, in, in court. Uh, but, but again, um, I don't think... Um, or, you could challenge me that uh, only because this or this image was, comes from a police camera, it always is for the police and cannot be and will always be against um, uh, the, the other side. I don't think that's the case because this would mean that uh, an image is essentially from one side or another. That's just not possible. You see what I mean? It's just, I, th I think even. The Chicago shooting video that was just released after a year is exactly that. It's a police dash cam video that makes the cops look terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that, that's just just the point, and because it has been released, and the the other point I've, I simply forgot. I'm sorry. Well, maybe, maybe I'll jump in. I mean, I think that there, I I I want to push back um, a little bit on the notion, and Bernard said something similar. Um, uh, earlier in the day when he said that the source of the data or the surveillance didn't really matter. Um, and I, and I, I, I sympathize, um, I think, with the questioner, in that, and this is the point I was trying to get at by bringing up the Supreme Court case of Scott v. Harris, which is that perspective does, in fact, matter, and not just, um, you know, even even physical perspective um, is critically important. So yes, can dash cam videos be used um, to hold police account can body cams be used to hold police um, to account I think the answer is that sometimes yes what is a what is a uh, perhaps a solution that uh, perhaps it doesn't expand the surveillance state and as the questioner uh, I think pointed out put um, <laughs> put the state in control of the solution is citizen driven um, surveillance that's from the perspective of the citizens that's from the perspective of the per person who is the subject of state sanctioned violence. I think that that's more apt to move the court of public opinion more apt to mo move um, the court of law and I'm just going to plug a colleague uh, really quickly. A colleague of mine Jocelyn Sim Simonson, former colleague of mine has a really interesting article about called cop watching which is about the role of citizen, um, citizen cop watching organizations. Did you want um, yeah, to the, this was, there was. I, I, I remember now uh, the, the cop watch um, uh, question. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure cop watch is such a good idea. To put it very shortly, um, I'm not sure this this is helping. Uh, and there are 
articles by Torin Monaghan, who was also very critical. Uh, he was following a group of Copwatch people, and he said basically it's white people speaking for black people. It's this all sort of a, we don't, uh, we, we are protecting them, uh, and this sort of middle class, liberal, rich guys protecting uh, the, the poor guys um, in, 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 a, in the poor quarters. And uh, they're not actually helping. This is cop watch is sort of ineffective. This is this is sort of a, what a study does. So um, I don't have de de definitive opinion on cop watch, but I'm critical. I'm not sure uh, this is sort of the solution. Everybody has a camera in its hand because simply it's, it's solutionism. More technology. It's, it's a, you see, it's the same logic. We need more uh, images, and this will get us out of there. And this is the same as as, uh, as the security people say. Because surveillance, in a way, always wins in, in, in the moment. Oh, my God, um, um, uh, people, th there was a bombing, there was a terrorist attack, or a ch child got killed, uh, abducted, and, and, and killed afterwards. We should have had surveillance. Um, and if there was surveillance, oh, we should have had more surveillance. Um, you see, it's always the same. Uh, if there was no surveillance, the argument would be, we need more surveillance. If there was surveillance, ah, uh, this was only black and white, we need color. And next, ah, uh, this was without sound, we need sound. And next, oh, this was only 2D, you have to be 3D, or what not. It, it, if you look at the arguments after something has happened, whether or not there was surveillance has no, um, it's no, not important. They always say, we need more surveillance. We need more technology. Not another technology. Hmm? Copwatch is not another technology. It's a different perspective. It's a different perspective. I'll give you that. And, and but what's, what's wrong if there's uh, uh, some solidarity and, and people, uh, I mean, even if they are from their background not, not involved, but that's the idea, that, that how much involved is not the, is not the uh, yeah. As I said, could, I'm, could I'm people, not could people hear the comment? against Copwatch. I'm just, I'm not sure it's, it's always the, the right thing or so. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm skeptical, I would say. I'm skeptical about Copwatch and counter surveillance. Yeah. I just wanted to, because the body cam issue is quite interesting. Um, uh, as, as the arguments for and against in Germany and America are just exchanged. In America, it is an issue about controlling the cops. While in Germany, this issue is not at all. It's an issue of um, protecting. Uh, protecting the cops yeah. against um, violence by people they approach. Totally different argument. Um, it is very interesting in hearings when um, I, I took part in those hearings and gave, gave them the perspective. Because I always say, you know, in America they always, you know, they also have it. And I say, well, didn't you read the report to its end? Because it's for controlling the cops. Ah, no, 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 we don't need this here. Uh, we're not in America, which is certainly true. But, you know, there is a different perspective from whose perspective it is and what the image actually is, is about to show, whose truth is. And although I sympathize with, well, cop watches or um, alternative perspectives of media and images, I, I would second you, Dietmar, and, and this is an arms race of, mm. of building up, you know, who has the better, uh, who has the latest technology and who's watching who and everybody's watching everybody. That give, doesn't give us truth. It gives us more perspectives, which we have anyway, because we have smartphones with cameras and YouTube is full of, 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 of well done or crappy films that show us a perspective, but we never know what it is, what's truth, and especially in the case of, uh, of, of, of cops, and it is, it m something else might get lost in this kind of arms race. I'm, so mm. there is, I'm, I'm undecided. Yes, so am I, yes, I'm skeptical. Gr great, great point, I mean, I, I think I would just add, um, you know, regardless of your view, yeah, uh, just one comment, regardless of your view on uh, who should be the best solution in terms of surveillance um, and where the camera should be, if the camera should be there at all, it's obviously not a complete solution and there's some real structural um, criminal justice and uh, societal problems that we need to get to, uh, to get to the heart of, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just another attempt to defend Copwatch and then another question. Um, I mean, it, it, uh, more perspectives uh, is, the, of course, the only thing that, that it can offer. And uh, but that's that's uh, there is no other thing that there's any problem of, of entropy. There are so many perspectives it won't be. And right now, there's of course one side of, that is heavily armed, and if the other side is. Uh, collecting a few arms. Uh, I don't know if arms race is, 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 a, is a good counter argument. First, there is a good reason to arm yourself if the other side is 
heavily armed. And the second thing is, um, uh, well, what, what, else, what else can you do? Uh, um, nobody expects truth from a certain technology. Only, that's only the image that, 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 that this kind of uh, propaganda for surveillance does. But nobody seriously can expect truth from images. But it is, uh, but it is, it is a few images from a different perspective more. And that leads me to uh, my other question. You were saying in the beginning, um, uh, images, no, images are not, will never be kind of uh, used as tools or pure instruments. They will always be interpreted because we are so culturally so heavily implicated yeah. in it. But I mean, the tendency is that, that, that images are more and more um, either biometrical or in other ways uh, working with um, uh, forms of objectification. Um, not necessarily in the classical police work where you have, where you're identifying someone from a drawing or, yeah. or, 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 or identify a situation, but in the operational sense, what, for example, producing files of uh, refugees that have already been sent away and try to enter the country a second time, they, and they, that they have no passport, they are identified biometrically. So these kind of images are. Uh, are on the rise, and they are obviously not read by humans. They are not read by, by interpreting eyes that saying, okay, maybe he's the same guy, maybe he's not the same guy, but they're interpreted by machines. Mm -hmm. And of course, also biometrical images are not uh, beyond interpretation. Uh, they could be interpreted if looked by those subjects that are knowing this game of interpretation called human subjects. But machines can always look at even non-biometrical images in an objective way. They can, they can select certain areas and, and identify something, whatever, whatever they, they are asked for to do. And that, I think, is, is uh, something that is not out of, the, of future developments. And the last thing I want to say is that I really enjoyed this, in the beginning, this photograph of uh, this delinquent uh, who's caught speeding and being so happy about being identified. Uh, are you going to look for it now? Yeah. yeah. Who looks like Wolfgang Tillmans, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but he's so happy about it, no? Yeah. Why is he so happy? Uh, he, is in a, he enjoys the mirror stage, no? Uh, and, um, and this is something that, that they can always rely on, no? that, that uh, there are always humans, I mean, not so much in the case of police work, but <clears throat> this is a funny exception, but in all of these other surveillance uh, situations we were talking about, there's always, the humans always enjoy the mirror stage. Mm. Um, biometrics and face recognition, um, which I don't know, one answer would be, um, as, as soon as we talk about machines interpreting um, photographies of, of human faces with algorithms, we are sort of realm of images, what I would call images. So that this is a completely different argument because we are in a realm of numbers and figures and, and, and these stuff. Um, this is one thing. Um, that these machines, these algorithms can fail, not, not only can fail, they fail all the time. I mean, th that's also proven. I mean, the, 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 the Bundeskriminalamt, uh, German police, whatnot, federal police, they conducted an extensive uh, test uh, of, of uh, face recognition software in Mainz a couple of years ago and found out that they have a re recognition rate of, I don't know, was it like 60% or so, and with a very small sample. Um, which means if you, if you, and this is, if you scale this, if, we're talking about like 100 or 200 people who volunteered in this project to be recognized when they were passing a certain, uh, when they're go, going through the train station in Mainz, um, and, and they were recognized really, really poorly. And if you have not 200 people, but say 20,000 or 2 million, the rate will even go down. That's mathematics. So I don't think that face recognition at the moment works on a grand scale, or, anyway, or put, put it the other way, all tests have shown that it doesn't work. So, in, in, in a real setting, on, on a real condition, sort of on, 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 on the open sky. This is one, one point. Um, um, but, but sort of, we do believe that they still can recognize, maybe, maybe they will in the future, I don't know. Um, this is about, yeah, bi biometrics is, is really a, a special field because um, we have shown so many images mm -hmm images in a news that show you how, how good it works and actually it doesn't work. Biometrics, again, it doesn't work. In, if, if for, for 
crime prevention. It would have to be a, a false positive rate of 0.1% would be necessary uh, to, to use this technology on a grand scale, or else you would produce false alarms every 10 seconds, and the police couldn't handle this. And it's just not technologically possible at the moment. Thank you. I'm totally up to wrap up. I just want to make one yeah. final point, which is that that really resonates. The point you're making about biometrics really, uh, I think, dovetails with the point Armand was making earlier about data pos positivism and the risks of uh, this idea that more data, more information is going to uh, solve all of our problems. And then we see this sort of bleeding in um, to crime prevention as well, and we might need to be wary of it. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank Deemer so much, uh, and thanks to all of you. Thanks for your questions and for your patience.